talking all about Photoshop masks. I want to cover a couple of different techniques you can use to edit them and refine them and some ways that you can apply them to your own photography. Masks are a type of non-destructive edit in Photoshop and essentially they let you hide things that you don't want in the photo. So for instance, I use masks in pretty much all my images. I use it to even out the background, get rid of weird like ice cream drops or cookie crumbs, whatever. And um, the fact that it's non-destructive is really important because if up until now you've been using the eraser tool or the blemish tool or maybe selecting things and hitting delete to get rid of stuff from the background, you're kind of setting yourself up to be in a pickle. Um, Photoshop only allows you that certain number of undos if you mess up and once you hit that point you're kind of screwed. So with the mask, if you ever find yourself needing to go back and revert to that original photo, you're totally good because there's been no permanent alterations. Alright, so the first method that I want to start out with is using the magic wand tool to create a mask. It's going to be the simplest and quickest way to do this and it works best on photos that have a lot of contrast where you can clearly see the background and what you want to take out of the photo. So to get the magic wand tool popped up you can just hit the W key. If you're hitting W and you don't see this little magic wand icon, you can go in here and you're probably on the quick selection tool, which works similarly but the magic wand tool is a lot faster and it's a lot more intuitive. And a trick that I like to use when I'm making selections, especially with the magic wand, is instead of trying to select everything that I do want in the photo, I do the opposite and I select what I don't want in the photo because it's a lot easier to get this flat background than going in and clicking on every little single thing. So, just gonna click once over here. And you can tell it kind of knows what you're thinking almost. Um, it knows like what direction you're heading in. It might miss a few spots here and there. It didn't select everything just yet. But to add to this selection, you can go ahead and hold down the shift key and see this little plus button that pops up. Just click on the areas that you want to add to the mask or to the selection. And it's going to get it for you. Sometimes it takes a few extra clicks, but for the most part, it's pretty quick. Okay, so with everything selected, to make a mask from this point, you can go down here onto this right side and click add a mask. There's a step that we're gonna do before this, but I'm gonna show you what it would look like if you were to just create a mask from this point. So you can tell there's a few problem areas. It's kind of jagged, it's a little rough around the edges. So I'm gonna show you the step that we're gonna take before we add the mask. So undo that. So with everything still selected, go into the select panel and hit this refine edge here. And you're gonna get this whole tool panel. And I'll zoom back in to that spot we are looking at where it's so jagged. And from here, we can bring up this smooth slider in the adjust edge area and see how it instantly just smooths that right out. And hit okay. And then from there, we can hit that mask button and you'll notice that because we selected the inverse, it's not the photo that we want. So go into this properties panel here and just hit invert. And then from here, we're just left with this transparent background. So you wanna drop in a solid layer. So I like to use the rectangle tool and just draw a rectangle behind it. And then to get the right color, because it's just gonna select whatever color you were using last, um, go ahead and click on your mask, not this, not the actual photo, click on the mask thumbnail and then hit this eye here. Double click the rectangle and you can use the eyedropper to kind of swatch whatever color is going to be the best for your background. Okay, turn the mask back on. All right, from here it's looking pretty good. There's still a little bit of problem areas, like down here, it didn't quite select everything. That looks like the only spot, really. But to fix that, just have your mask selected and go to the brush tool. Make sure you're on black over here and just paint that to add to the mask. And we're gonna go deeper into that whole process in the next method. 
Okay, so now I wanna elaborate a little more on that whole brush method that I just touched on. So this method is gonna work really well on photos where there's not a lot of clear contrast between the background and the object, uh, monochromatic photos like this. So you can see if you were to use the wand tool, it kind of doesn't even know what you're asking it to do. It goes a little crazy and it kind of like selects everything. So you can tell there's a lot of chunks, important chunks missing from the photo that we need. But at the same time, we can kind of use this as a starting point and then use the brush tool to jump off of that and paint those back in. So I'm gonna drop in my background here using that same method. Okay, and to get the brush tool up, just hit B on your keyboard. So the whole idea here is, if you can see from the thumbnail, the mask is what's black. And then what's left, what's visible, is this white part here. So using that same kind of idea, that same property, the black brush is going to remove from the photo, but not permanently, it's just adding to the mask, if you remember. And then a white brush is going to paint back in the photo. A few things to note here, you can change the brush hardness um, up here. I think the default is like really hard. It's like this 100%. The line is like way too strong. So I like to keep it around like 30 or 20% when I'm using a mask like this. And another thing is, this is where you control the color of the brush. You can just easily change it in here. And to quickly go from black to white, you can go ahead and hit your X key and it'll alternate for you. So you can kind of change between painting in and painting out. It's kind of a relaxing process, honestly. Um, it takes a little bit longer than the magic wand tool, obviously, because you're doing it all pretty manually. But it really allows you to have a lot more control over it. Another quick shortcut is changing the size of the brush. If you hit the right bracket on your keyboard, it's going to make the brush bigger. And if you hit the left bracket, it makes it smaller. So I'm just painting the shadows back in right now. Um, when you're painting with the shadows in the mask, you can change the hardness. Um, you might need to go a little softer for the shadows. And also depending on what size your brush is, it really affects the hardness of the edge. So if I have a tiny brush, I haven't changed the hardness, but I changed the size, and you can see it's giving a lot crisper line. So you kind of just want to play around with it. So this whole time our brush has been at 100% opacity, but if you want to knock down the shadows a little bit, you can make your brush a little bit less strong and kind of lighten up the shadows like that too. It's a nice little trick. And if you accidentally go too far trying to paint out those shadows, you can just push it back to 100% and paint in that object. All right, so it's looking pretty good. Um, the background is a lot cleaner. There's no uneven shadows or highlights or anything. Um, and we were able to kind of like play with our shadows using the opacity. So it's definitely a process. Um, I recommend doing it with a tablet, doing it with some music on, maybe watching TV, because it can kind of take a little bit longer, but it's definitely worth it to get that result in the end. So one quick check that I like to do is to make sure that I got everything into the mask that's needed. So you can hit this backspace key and it's gonna show you what the mask actually looks like to find the lines a little more. So like, oops, like missed a little bit here. You can go and fix that. And it's just defining the edges of the mask. It's not like changing your background to pink or anything. So 
So up until now, we've mostly been talking about using masks as a way to get a nice solid background, but it's also great for combining multiple elements into a single photo, like in this case. So this disco ball is actually masked out from a separate photo. Take those two different photos and then select this disco ball, the part that I want. Go ahead and copy it. And then I pasted it into this photo here. So to get rid of this background and make it fit in seamlessly with this other photo, I just masked it out. Um, since it's a circle, I'm using this elliptical selection tool, which is yet another method that you can use for something like this. Go ahead and refine my edges again. That one took a little extra step on um, just using the perspective warp, which you might remember from the first video. But essentially all it is is a mask to combine these two separate things and it's a lot easier than cutting a disco ball in half and gluing it to your phone. So hopefully the video was helpful. Um, I know it was kind of a lot of information jam-packed into a short amount of time. So if you need anything like further clarified, um, need anything explained a little more, just let me know in the comments and I'll definitely get back to you. And thanks so much for watching, you guys.